do the right thing, uh, school days. That's really more along the lines of nostalgia than actual quality. They're pretty, like, they're a little bit too long. Maybe my attention span's been broken for being alive this long but like you know they're a little bit too long for me to give a full sit through these days but i remember enjoying those two films from this uh film auteur spike lee yes he is uh he's opening his mouth again and the deal is is that all these holly weirdos just nah man i'm like i'm sorry <laughs> like everyone it feels like everyone is in a mad dash to determine to 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 declare ownership over blackness which is why i say yeah man i'm i'm cool off that y'all y'all can have it but it's really crazy to witness uh people like spike lee ice cube uh, ice t all of these quote-unquote black celebrities or the uh bourgeoisie class of urban america um be so balls deep into the Trump derangement syndrome that it, it, like they, their hypocrisy is endless. It truly is. This is coming to us from the Daily Wire. Spike Lee, some Negroes will be drinking Trump's orange Kool-Aid in November. This is written by Paul Boyce. Yeah, about 40% of them or so. Uh, 60% is definitely going to be riding with Biden. I mean, let's make no mistake. You I mean, you ain't black if you're um, a rotten with, if you're not riding with Biden. Come on, baby. Golly, this guy. Like, yo, you can't tell him. Like, okay, like, due to just purely his stature, it's like the same reason I like I I do not, I'm not a very, you know, I'm not vertically gifted. So <laughs> I don't want to go to prison. Why don't I want to go to prison? Because those who are vertically gifted, yeah, it's it's, it's not all good. So when it comes to <laughs> when it comes to Spike Lee and like, you know, the the strangeness that is Holly Weird, man, and this man's been in the game for oh so long. Uh, Director Spike Lee refers to some Negroes that will be drinking President Donald Trump's orange Kool-Aid this no this November this coming November, dismissing them as a small percentage. Like I say, sixty percent for Biden just off top due to the ur the way um urban America is structured. You know the infrastructure of urban America. Like I said, my own um congressman not congress well yeah my congressman but like the, the entire like oh dim party you wrong with biden and it's like dude uh okay sure speaking with gail king uh, oh oh gail king this is amazing yes of course so, the, golly these people they 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 th these are those who you know who are financially incentivized to be the representative they speak they speak for black America. We, I, I mean, I need to get my marching orders, right? I definitely need to get my marching orders. <laughs> uh, on today, on Tuesday, Spike Lee discussed his upcoming movie, The Five Bloods, and his decision to feature a black Trump supporter as one of the main characters. So somebody with severe TDS has written a movie where there's a black Trump supporter. I, 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 I will admit, I'm a tad bit intrigued because i would like to see how he's how he's portrayed but at the same time it's fiction though he said the film will treat the character with dignity lee's rhetoric about such people was less dignified that's how you know he's completely talking out of his ass when it comes to treating the character with dignity in the movie you include a black trump supporter complete with a make america great again hat on now knowing how vocal you've been against the president i think many people were surprised that you made that decision how come uh gail king as lee as reported go away ben um <laughs> as reported by newsbusters well there are some negroes that have drunk or will drink the orange kool-aid that's coming in november but it's a very very small percentage and i need it we needed that, my co-writer Ken Wilmot and, and I to put some tension in the group, he said. Yeah, because, you know, I mean, what's conflict, right? It, like, golly, I, I don't know. This, this isn't sounding like it's about to be the most popping movie ever because, hey, Spy a lot of Spike Lee movies are boring. I, like, seriously, yo. And outside of, what was that, like, she, um, was that, she hate me? Which was, I mean, it was, it was on a sexual side as well. Like, his more sexual stuff, like, yeah, but that's because of the sexuality involved. Past that, it's like, ugh. like, And even in those sexual flicks, 
they're, they're, they're boring. Like, a lot of Spike Lee movies are boring as hell, yo. But they, he's the one that, you know, they was like, yeah, we're going to push you out there. And you're now a voice for black America. Go get him. Go get him, champ. Spike Lee asserted that the character played by acclaimed actor Delroy Lindo will be treated sympathetically. Well, here's the deal, because Delroy Lindo was in another very boring Spike Lee movie called Crooklyn that everybody sat there back in the um, day back, I think it was the, the 90s, like mid-90s, where everybody's watching that movie, like, oh man, Crooklyn is so good, it's so it's so great, and it's just like, yo, this is boring, yo, and the character that Delroy Lindo played was like, you know, a bit of a D-bag in and of himself. I mean, he was a good father, make no mistake. He was a good father, but like, you know, it was certain um choices that were made and a lot of conflict that took place in that film that uh like i just you know it's all scripted it's all fiction ain't it so i believe that we should just take it as such but you know how media is these four brothers who grew up who fought side by side in the vietnam war and are coming back 40 some years later he said so everyone can't be everyone went off after they came so everyone can't be. Everyone went off after they came back from the war. So people went their different ways. And I would like to add, played by the great Delroy Lindo, he really makes you understand why he's wearing that hat and you have sympathy for him. Well, that's the thing. Like, But that's like, it's OK. So here's the thing, particularly when it comes to Trump. It's he literally uh, his America is his whole thing. The man just lives, breathes, and in, in, in bathes in wet, red, white, and blue, apparently. He, he sits there and says, yeah, I'm doing what I can for the American people. He never puts a qualifier on it, right? He, he never says, he's just, I, I look, I'm looking to do the best for the American people. And whether or not you want to recognize that, America is a people. We've had, you know, we, we fought wars. It's been around for 200 years. There are generations of people who came up here who have a, a fierce devotion to and devotion and loyalty to this country and the way of life that it's been able to provide for them. This is something that a lot of people are. It's easy to understand. But for, you know, the um, oh, we have so much sympathy for him. It's not sympathy. How can how can it be? How can you be sympathetic for somebody who just wants the best for the country that, you know, we live in, that we occupy, that, that that's home? That's the thing that like really irritates me. And I am to assume that Spike's from America. Like, you know, he's a descendant as well, if memory serves me correctly. So how you can be so blind to that angle that the president comes from is it's like you think that there's like, you know, it's, it's very anti-American. It's very unappreciative of all the sacrifices to get even you, Spike, where you are. It really blows my mind how easily all these prominent uh, people, people of color, um, forget, you know, like, dude, like <laughs> you live a fantastic life. You've gotten to do things that many people, black, white, green, blue, purple, yellow, wouldn't be able to do. So how about be to have some gratitude? How about give our history the reverence it deserves because as because we've been able to, you know, continue to move on. But no, no, no. Everybody's a victim. Everybody's a victim. My congressman, my congressman, who's the son of a congressman, was sitting there and, and posted about his son talking about how, oh, yeah, he was a victim because he was going to school in Paramus. My, OK, so my Congress is New Jersey's congressional 10th. Paramus is in the 5th. Why was it your son going to school in the 10th? You get what I'm saying? Like, that's privilege in and of itself. Yet you want to sit here and pretend, oh, yeah, we were all, it's just, I'm black, so I'm so, I'm, 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 it's such a disservice. Miss me, fam. Miss me. Speaking with The Guardian, actor Delroy Lindo said he had a difficult time accepting the role of a black Trump supporter when Spike Lee first approached him. Christ, because why? You're a child. Because you're a child, Delroy Lindo. That's why. Because you're an over emotional little bitch. That's why. I remember saying to Spike, I've got a 17 year old son, man. I don't want him seeing me representing this person that represents the country that made the life that you've been able to provide for your 17 year old son uh, available to you. No, no, man. You know what? Because that's the thing. It should be. That's the thing about this country. It shouldn't really be about the president. And I've said this to people so many different times, man. Like, yo, like I ain't worrying about no president because like you the one in front of me, you the person in front of me. You're my fellow American, as far as I know. So, you know, let's let's chill, let's kick it, let's talk, let's discuss a few things. And you know how often those conversations end up in just a, a fantastic place? Because, oh, wow, yo, I didn't think of it that way. And me, if, you, if you're able to do that to me, like, I'll be like, yeah, I, I didn't think of it that way either. And we get to come to some type of resolve to where I was like, you know what, yeah. Like, why, we, why allow that one man, that one man to define the entire nation for you, regardless of how you feel about him? It was a good country, man. I'm sorry. I lived all over it.
this is a good damn country. We got so many good hearted people in here. It's way too many to sit there and be like, oh, well, because the president is somebody I don't like, then screw America. Miss me, family. Miss me all day. Oh, my goodness. It had to do with my values. <laughs> yeah, Hollywood values. As a parent and somebody get, get, that gets pegged and as a being on this planet, I feel like I would be representing an individual who is, I don't have the words to discuss this individual, but that's the thing. You're not representing Trump. You're representing a, just a, a black guy who would happen to agree with his positions. And so thusly, you're, this has nothing to do with Trump. It has something to do with, you know, like people who just don't, who, who are ideologically opposed to you. And that's the problem with ideologies, guys. Lindo just suggested that the character be a art concert, an art conservative, but Spike Lee insisted that he be a Trump supporter. Try, Spike thought about it for a few days, then said, "Yeah, I really need him to be a Trump supporter." Said Lindo, "That's right, because my propaganda has to be spicy." <laughs> in the Instagram post on March, the director shared a photo of several of Trump supporters in the black community, including YouTube. See, that's the thing. And they always go to the Candace Owens and the youth. And, and, and that's the, I'm not a Trump supporter. I just no, like I'm an American like my guy. Like I want my country to do well. And if you don't like, yeah, why? Why don't you want the country to do well? Because of one person? And I'm sorry, but, you know, I like you too much, right? I like you too much to want you to, to be harmed. So I would much prefer the country to just do okay and, you know, hold our nose and get through it. But they always go to, like, you know, the the, the Diamond and Silks, the, um, the Brandon Tatums, the... Uh, the, the Candace Owens of the world, because those are the ones that that spark the most, you know, oh, my goodness, how dare, uh-uh. And it's like, dude, like, really? Ugh, calm down. I, I don't believe in getting over-emotional about people I've never met. <laughs> Praying over him in the Oval Office. Employing deeply racist language, recalling that of a submissive Southern house slave, Spike Lee wrote, Massa, we love you. Massa, we gonna pray for you. Massa singing sweet, singing sweet load, swing load, sweet chariot. But Lee, you, you do the exact same thing. I have absolutely no doubt about it. No doubt about it. If Terry Crews, right? <laughs> if Terry Crews got fondled, what do you think happened to Spike Lee? Okay. <laughs> Sorry. During the COVID-19 pandemic, Spike Lee even suggested that the world was suffering the Earth's wrath. Oh my God, he's so dramatic. He's such a woman. Sorry, ladies, but I mean, y'all got to take this L too because... <laughs> <laughs> oh my goodness if they got terry cruz uh before corona after corona this is changing everything lee said but you know why the reason i read an article about it how pollution is clearing up skies are clear animals are coming out i mean you know the earth was angry at us people may think i'm crazy yeah definitely that i believe that it in my heart and soul that we had gone too far on earth and her and we had gone too far and earth said hold up we gotta change this we gotta do something we were killing this planet, Lee continued. And you know, okay, yeah, Captain Planet, he's our hero, gonna take pollution down to zero. All right, cool. So, uh, <laughs> yeah, why is he dressed like freaking, um, Waluigi, man? Like, that, that's from the Oscars, the one where he jumped up in, um, he jumped up in, uh, Samuel L. Jackson's arms, like, you, yeah, please. Like, yo, it, like, he said he complained about what, um, uh, Diamond and Silk say, but like, dude, uh, you you do the exact same thing. Make absolutely no mistake. All y'all Holly weirdos do, but like, you know, want to throw your nose up at others who just simply disagree with you, which is trash, but it is what it is, man. So with that being said, we're going to bring this one to an end. All the internet stuff. If you like this, also like this, like, go ahead, do that too. Nobody's scared of you. Sub if you join my fantastic voice and want get videos like this every single day. Share because sharing is caring and YouTube and bitch you and like aren't big fans of your boy over here for very obvious reasons. Bang the bell for notifications and speak. Let me know. What do you guys think in the comments? Uh, honestly, I like I wasn't going to see this anyway because I haven't seen like a Chirac was so trash like it really was i was not feeling that flick at all and i was just like you know i'm done with him after this because all of his films be boring as hell man like seriously i didn't bother with uh black clansmen or any other other race hustling bullshit that he done put out because it's like yo there's this narrative that a lot of the you know a, a lot of the marxist socialist you know communist types are really like feeling and i ain't with that man i ain't with Throwing away the sacrifices of my ancestors because you know everybody want to sit here and play butthurt because this is really just nothing but country destabilization and they're trying to do it they're trying to get us by the race but I don't, uh, 
I, I, I'm going to post uh, this conversation I had with uh, Shem about race, on, like about racism, because as a nation, we got to a point where we was all bugging out. We was all laughing with each other about the shit. Chappelle show, um, you know, uh, 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 well, mainly, yeah, Chappelle show, they kept trying and they kept pushing along with uh, Mencia and, uh, and Key and Peele, right, on Comedy Central. But... Pfft, they, they, it, it now, like, it's just, it's, they took a, a playground that we had to, you know, really bug at each other about, you know, laugh with each, laugh with each other about and just turn it into a battlefield. And it's trash. It really is. And he one of these generals. And I'm just not feeling it. I'm really not. Because we're better than that. I've, I've, I'm sorry, guys. I've been all over this country. I've met too many good people to sit here and be like, oh, no, man, this country's so terrible. Oh, I'm such a victim. Like, no, I, I made whatever choices I made, I made. You know, that whatever choices you made, you made. All those choices, but don't say, and yeah, do, does shit happen? Shit happens. But to sit here and pretend like, oh, yeah, we at where we were? Hell no. Nah, I ain't feeling that. This ain't then. But you may disagree, and that's what my comment section's for. Until the next one.